Have you heard of World War II? Hi kids, this is Auntie Myla. I'm so glad you came by. Did you have a good day today? Did you go to school? Well, I had a good day today. And our story is a miracle story. It's about a miracle tablecloth. And you'll see what a miracle it is. And by the way, I've told you before, but I'm going to tell you again, I only tell true stories. I don't tell fiction or makeup stories. All my stories are true. And I just read the story again, and it was by Pastor uh, Neil. And at the bottom it says, this is a true story. Okay, our verse goes along with the story. You know, our verses always go along with the story. It's in John chapter 16, verse 20, and it says, But your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. Don't we all like that? You're real sad, and all of a sudden it turns to ah, wonderful joy. Okay, well, here's the story. Now, this happened... Um, a long time ago, of course. And a pastor and his wife, a young pastor and his wife with just little children, moved to Brooklyn, New York, because they had been asked to be the pastor of this little church. And they said, oh yeah, we'll be a pastor. He said, I'll be a pastor. And he went to the church and he looked at the church. The church was broken down. It had broken windows and they walked inside. And it smelled musty. They hadn't used the church for a long time. It was dusty and dirty, and the pews, the paint was peeling off. And he looked at his wife, and he said, What do you think? And she said, oh, it's, it's a real disaster, like a dump. Because no one had been using the church. No one had been going to church there. And they looked around. They said, Well, they came in October. And they said, Well, I suppose we can work really hard, and... We could replace some windows, and um, we could paint, and oh, look at the ceiling, it just is ugly. They said, well, we'll do it, and get it done for Christmas Eve. That's a real good idea, the day before Christmas, and we'll have a Christmas program here. Oh, that's a good idea. His wife said, okay, I'll help you. So every day, they had to get settled into their house, but every day they came to the church, and they would sweep, and sand the chairs and uh, the pews and paint and had to replaster and oh, a couple of broken windows. They had to measure, go and buy the new windows, put them in, take out the old ones. And they kept working on that every day. When they, I said they got there in October, October, November, December, and they got done. They were all done by December 17. And they said, we're done. We're ahead of schedule because what day is Christmas Eve? December 24. And they said, we're ahead. Oh, that is so wonderful. Praise the Lord. And they thanked the Lord and they praised the Lord because they had asked the Lord to help them fix up that church. They wanted to have a nice little church for the community, the people that lived there. And they were so happy. They went home, they locked the door and they walked home. They said, we're done early. That church looks really nice. The floors, they... They uh, polished them, and they painted the church. It just was in perfect shape. They went home, and they said, Well, uh, I wonder what we're going to do until Christmas. Well, uh, that night, it started to rain. It started to rain and rain, and the wind blew, and there was lightning and thunder and lightning. It rained all that night. It rained all the next day. It rained all the next night, all the next day, for two days and Two nights it rained, and it was a storm. And they said, well, we don't have to go to church because the church is all remodeled, and it's really nice. We just have to wait for Christmas. Well, two days after the storm, the storm died down, and the pastor went back to the church. He said, I want to see it. He unlocked the door, and he walked in. All of a sudden, he was horrified, absolutely horrified. Up at the front, the rain had leaked through the roof, and it had come down behind the plaster, and right behind the pulpit, uh, 
a big chunk of plaster had just fallen down and there was a hole in the wall, an ugly hole. I said, no. He says, oh, Lord, why did that happen? We've worked so hard. What do we do? We can't fix it. And this was just a few days before December 24 when they had announced to everyone they're going to have a, uh, a church service and a Christmas service. He said, oh. He went and got the broom and he started sweeping up the plaster and dumping it in the trash. And, and then his wife was there. She says, oh, that's terrible. There's a leak in the roof. I wonder where the leak is. And so they washed. She got a pail of um, water and soap, soap and water and washed it all up the plaster. But there was still that big ugly hole. He said, well, I think we probably should just cancel because if everyone comes and they see an ugly hole, they say, we don't want to go to a church like that that has a big ugly hole in the front. He says, I think we're going to have to cancel. And he and his wife were very discouraged, and they started walking home because they didn't live too far from the church. And he walked past a building, and a sign said, um, we're having a sale. Uh, come in and look around. And they said, oh, a sale. People had donated things. It was like a rummage yard sale, but it was indoors because it was cold in New York in December. And he went in and he said, well, maybe I wonder if I could find something to tack up there and uh, cover the hole. And he was looking around, looking around, and looking around. And you know what he found? He found a lace tablecloth. He says, well, look at this. Oh, this is really pretty. He said, I wonder if I could take this and tack it up. I wonder if I could. And he took this tablecloth and he said, I think I will. I'm going to try it. And if it works, if it works, then I will use it. And then we can have our church service Christmas Eve. So he said, how much is this tablecloth? And they told him it wasn't very expensive because it was very old. And he said, I'll take it. I'll take it. He gave the money to the lady, and he took it. He says, I'm going right back to the church, and I'm going to put that up. So he walked, uh, walked real fast. He got back to the church, and this lady, he saw this lady running to catch the bus. And she was running, running. She just missed the bus. The bus just went. And so she was standing there really cold. He says, ma'am, he says, why don't you come into our church? The next bus isn't coming for 45 minutes. He says, come in and wait inside our church. And keep warm so you won't have to stand here in the cold she says, oh thank you that's a very good idea so she went in and she sat down in the church and she was just looking around so he took the tablecloth and he says i'm going to see if this fits and he got some nails and some hammer and he took the tablecloth and he started hanging it up and he hammered this here and then he hammered this over here uh, and he started hammering this up and got it all up. And he stood back and he says, you can't see the hole. It worked. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord. We can still have our Christmas Eve service. And so he was so happy. He, it was all hung up and it covered up the hole. But you know what? He went back to that lady and that lady was just staring at that tablecloth. She was just staring just like that. And he said, does it look okay? And she kind of nodded. She said, this is so interesting. 35 years ago in Austria, I made a tablecloth just like that. That looks like the one I made because in the very middle it had a cross. She said, could you check and see if there are initials in the bottom corner? E, G, B? He says, yeah. Walked over. Yes. The initials are E-G-B. She says, that's my tablecloth. He said, oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I have it up here. I, I bought it at the uh, sale just down the road. Yeah, I'll take it off and give it to you. She says, oh, no, no, no. That's fine. If it covers up your hole, I'm so glad you can use it. That was her tablecloth. She had handmade it in Austria 35 years before. And he says, well, ma'am, he said, <clears throat> I don't want you to have to take the bus. He says, I'm going to drive you home. She says, well, I live over on Staten Island. Well, oh, that's okay. <clears throat> I want to take you home. No, I want to take you home. 
but I live on Staten Island. Oh, no problem. You just come. That's the least I can do for making that tablecloth just for us. She said, oh, thank you very much. She said, I came over to Brooklyn because I had a housekeeping job, and I just cleaned a house, and now I'm going back. She says, come get in my car. So they rode along, drove and drove and drove. Her apartment, she says, I live on the third floor. I have this apartment house. You can just stop here. She, he said, okay. He stopped and got out, and she says, thank you so much. He said, well, if you're ever in the area, stop by to our church. We'd love to have you. And she said, thank you. And she went into her apartment. He drove back. And he was thinking about that. He says, I can't believe that lady made that tablecloth. And I just bought it. And so the tablecloth was all hanging in the church. So the days went by and December 24, Christmas Eve came by. And so he went there, his wife was there. It was such a lovely program. They had music, his wife played the organ, and they sang, and he read the Christmas story, and the church just filled up with people because they had bells and they rang the church bells, rang the church bells. People said, oh, it's Christmas Eve, I need to go to church. And people just came in, and then he told the people, he said, thank you for coming to our Christmas service. Please come back again because we're going to have church here every week. Can you come back again, please? And they said, yes, we'll come back. And people were walking out. He was shaking hands with people. You know how the minister does, shakes hands with people as they walk out, walk out. And they said, well, that was a wonderful evening. And they walked back in and they looked and there was an older man sitting about halfway and he was just sitting there. I wonder why he didn't go home. I wonder if he has a problem. And so he walked over and said, Sir, I'm, thank you for coming this evening. We really appreciate you coming. And the man wouldn't talk to him. The man was just staring at the tablecloth that was up there. And he said, he says, that's so strange, that tablecloth. My wife made a tablecloth just like that years ago in Austria. In fact, it was about 35 years ago. And then what happened is the Nazis were coming and we had to run for our lives. And I told my wife, you go ahead and I'll come in a week. And I've never seen my wife since and I've never been home to my house since because they caught me and put me in a concentration camp for years and I got out. But that tablecloth, my wife made a tablecloth like that. He says, really? And she, he said, yes. Are there initials on the bottom of that? I was wondering if by any chance. And the pastor went over. He says, yes, E-G-B. He says, that was my wife that made that tablecloth. He says, it was? He says, well, come with me. I have a Christmas ride for you that you will never forget. And he took the man and drove him where? To Staten Island. And he knew exactly where to drive. He drove there and he said, come with me. And they walked up three flights of stairs and knocked at a door. And guess what? You know the story. It was his wife. He hadn't seen his wife in 35 years. And his wife looked at him and he looked at his wife because they had aged in 35 years. And they were so happy to find each other at Christmas Eve. Isn't that a sweet story? And that's a true story. God loves to work miracles. He's a God of wonders. And you know, like our verse said, her sadness and grief went to joy. And so did the husband. God is good. I want to thank him. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful Christmas story. Dear Lord, how you brought a lonely husband and a lonely wife back together again. You are amazing. We love you. Thank you for your marvelous deeds. For Jesus' sake, amen. Thank you for coming by. Can you come again? Okay, we'll see you. Bye.